Hey everyone. In this video, I want to talk about a new preview feature, the Azure AD Temporary Access Pass. Um, and I want to give a little bit of background first to see why this is so useful. Uh, as always, if this is useful, uh, like, subscribe, comment, and share is appreciated. So the idea is, obviously, we have Azure AD. And inside that Azure AD, we have accounts. Now, those might be cloud accounts created directly in Azure AD, or maybe they are synchronized from AD using Azure AD Connect or the new Azure AD Cloud Sync. To actually use the account, we're used to the idea of using a password. But a password on its own, well, we don't really like that. It's open to attack. So what we want to do is do multi-factor authentication, something I know, something I am, something I have. And we can think about, well, that could be kind of an SMS message. It could be kind of a, a phone call. Or better, what we prefer over that is something like the Authenticator app giving notification or some kind of token. So those things kind of add the MFA to that. So that's a strong authentication when we use our password and then one of these kind of MFA technologies. But the utopian goal is to really get to password less. Now to do that, I have to bootstrap that password less using a strong authentication. So I have to have this configured to be able to set up the password less configuration. Now that might be hello for business. It could be kind of a, a FIDO2. It could be the kind of auth app. It really depends on the scenario, because if we actually look at the documentation, when we think about the different passwordless options available, well, there's different scenarios supported. So if we think about, well, a computer sign-in from a Windows 10 device scenario, well, those first ones, I can't use phone all for that. I can use a security key. I can use hello for business um, for that assigned Windows 10 device. If it was shared, well, then I have to use the FIDO2 key. I can use the phone-based password list if it's kind of those web-based scenarios. So we have these different sets of scenarios to think about. But the goal is I want to get to that password list. Well, if I want to go directly to password list, how do I get rid of having to have that password and set up that MFA? I want to go straight to bootstrap in the Hello for Business or the FIDO2 key. So this is where this new capability, this temporary access pass comes in. So this is time limited. I can configure it for things like optionally a one-time use. And what it's going to do is I configure on my Azure AD tenant, if I'm going to enable this feature, then I go and add this for particular users. Now I'm going to show it from the portal. I can also do this from a REST API. It's just a single um, post on a particular URL. And then I can generate a temporary access pass. So let's actually go and take a look at this. So if we jump over to our Azure AD, what we'll firstly do is actually look at, well, what is that configuration? So if we go to our Azure AD tenant, and then I scroll down to my security, and then I'm going to my authentication methods. And what we can see here is I have these various policies, and I've got this temporary access preview. Now, I've turned that on for everyone. But you can see here, I can say, well, enable it, yes or no. Do you want to enable it for all users or select users? And then I can specify, well, what are the settings? So I can set a minimum lifetime in minutes, hours, days, a maximum lifetime in minutes, hours, days, a default lifetime, uh, a length of the token, and is it required to be one-time use? I can only use it once, or I can set that when I actually go and create it. So I have all these various settings available to me. Now, in terms of actually creating these, if we actually look at the documentation for the temporary access pass, it will tell us the various permissions required to actually create a temporary access pass. 
So here you can see all of global admins can create for any user except themselves. Privileged authentication admins can create for any user and any admin. Auth administrators can create for any users but not admins. And then obviously a global administrator can also view tap details on the user. But even then they cannot read the code. Once the code is generated, um, I can't get access to it. Again, when I generate this thing, it really is that kind of, hey, it's gonna show it to me and I have to use it. So what I wanna do is I've set up kind of a demo because one of the key things to think about, this tap essentially equals an MFA auth. It is a strong authentication. So when I sign in with the tap, it is a strong authentication. It satisfies MFA authentication, i.e. I can then use that to directly then set up the passwordless options. I don't have to go and set all this other stuff first. Now, why is it considered a strong auth? Remember, I as an admin are going to create this token. It's going to show it to me. Well, then I, I have to get it to that user somehow. So I would maybe phone them. It would be some direct communication to that user. It's not some long-standing thing. So it's temporary. Uh, I set an expiration on it, so it will count as a strong authentication. Now to prove that to you, what I'm gonna do is I've set up a special conditional access policy. And all I'm doing is for one particular user to access the portal, they have to do MFA. So if we go and quickly look at that kind of setup, if I go back to my security, go to conditional access, I have this new Bruce MFA portal. And all I've done here is it only applies to Bruce Wayne, so it's one user. It only applies to the Microsoft Azure management cloud apps, and it has one requirement that they have to do an MFA. So let's prove that out. If I open a new private window, and if I just go to the regular kind of myapps.microsoft.com, if I could type, I can then authenticate. So I'll authenticate as usual. I'll type in my regular password. And I'm signed in. So that's my My Apps experience. Don't show that again. No, don't stay signed in. So there I am, and I don't really have anything here. So there's that experience available to me. Now, if I open up a new tab and go to portal.azure.com, well, that conditional access has kicked in. It's saying, look, you actually need to go and set up MFA. I can't get access to it. So it, it's stopping me doing that. It's requiring that MFA to actually be there. So now what I'm gonna do is for Bruce, I'm actually gonna go ahead and set up a temporary access pass. So I go to the user, I go to authentication methods. Now I have to be using the new authentication methods experience. You'll see a little bar at the top that says, hey, use the new experience. So I've clicked that. I'm gonna add an authentication method and I'm gonna add a temporary access pass. Now notice here, I could set it for a future time. I can set the duration and I made it optional. Is it one time use or not? So I'm gonna say yes and add. Now at this point, it will show me a special URL they can go to, their My Security Info, and what is the temporary access pass. Once I close this, I cannot get this token again. So now, I'll open up that private window. I'm not gonna use that URL, I'm just gonna go straight to the My Apps experience again. But normally you would give the user that URL to use myapps.microsoft.com. Now, one of the things you're gonna see is it, it knows there's a temporary access pass. So notice now I have this use your temporary access pass instead. Now the reason it's giving me that option is because in my environment, I am doing kind of the sync and I have seamless sign on enabled. So if it's password hash is replicated or it's password authentication, I actually get a seamless auth experience if I'm authenticated in my AD. So that's why it's now giving me that dialogue to say, hey, um, do you wanna use a temporary access pass? So yes, I do. So I'm gonna click the link to say, yes, I want to use my temporary access pass. 
And now I'm going to paste in that pass and sign in. And again, I'll say, no, don't do that. So I am now signed in. Now, if I use that special URL it showed me, we can actually go over to that as well. It's just showing the security info. So we'll look at that as well. I would actually be able to quickly, and I can get to there from my apps, but I'm just being lazy. It will show me my temporary access pass as an auth method. So we can see it here. We can see, hey, look, when's it going to expire? And as the user, I can actually go and delete that from here. But I've now authenticated with strong auth. Notice I can get to my security info. So I could actually now go in and do things like my MFA configuration, all those other things. But this is a strong authentication. To prove that, let's try and go to portal.azure.com. Remember before it wouldn't let me because it needed MFA. Well, now I can go to it because that temporary access pass is considered a strong authentication. So tap equals MFA auth, a strong auth. And at this point, I could now use it for those passwordless bootstrap or anything where I need a strong auth. Maybe um, some executive is out on an expedition in the jungle and they've lost their phone and they can't do a, an MFA to get to the expense app to uh, prove my expenses, which is super important. Uh, technically, I could create them a tap give them that code, they've now authenticated with strong authentication, they can do anything they would normally need to do um, with that strong auth. Now, there are some caveats, especially when I use kind of that one time use. Like for example, there's a 10 minute window I actually have to do various kind of that bootstrapping. If I actually go and definitely read the document, if you're gonna seriously use this, read the document. But it does talk about, for example, some limitations. So here it talks about, hey, look, if I'm using that one time tap to register password list, um, you have 10 minutes from the time you've signed in, you have 10 minutes to complete that kind of configuration. Obviously, guest users can't use a tap. Um, there were some various other things to go and read through. But overall, I think this is a, a super powerful, very useful feature that super simple to set up. We have that full control of who we want to enable this for. Again, the regular kind of accounts that can manage authentication have those various levels of delegation on the types of users they can use this for. So that's it, that's the temporary access pass. You can only have one at a time. So if I wanted to give them maybe another one, I would go and delete the old one, or we saw the user can delete it themselves as well. Um, but that's it, I hope this was useful. Until next time, take care.